I used to work full-time at a Wendy's since being a high school dropout. With my years of experience, I already knew everything there is to know about when it comes to running this fast food joint. I've done it all, from working at the drive-thru to serving the customers as a cashier to even making sure the establishment was always clean as a janitor. Even though I was grateful to have this job, I still hated my life because I had no choice but to work, even in the worst conditions. Since the boss was very demanding, I was usually the cashier who had to take the customer's orders, and it gave me such a migraine, especially at lunchtime when customers came in and out of the restaurant non-stop. On one shift, there was someone more demanding than my boss, a customer who was incredibly nitpicky about every ingredient in his freaking burger and fries. He had the nerve to stand up and embarrass me in front of my colleagues and the other customers, who would murmur and giggle as they glanced at me, entertained by my humiliation. If I had to describe him, he reminded me of a character in a famous cartoon who relentlessly harassed Spongebob about pickles. That's how annoying this customer was to me. One night, I saw on television that we had to prepare for an upcoming thunderstorm, so I expected my boss to be a little bit more considerate this time. But despite my constant pleas to take a leave and stay home, he insisted that I go to work unless I wanted to get fired. I know you've allowed the other staff to stay home, so why am I the exception? I said. Cause this is your punishment for getting us in trouble with that customer the other day, so stop complaining! He replied. But there's a storm out there and it's on its way here. So what? There have been many storms in the past. Stop being such a wuss and grab an umbrella, wear a bathing suit, take an Uber, goddammit! I did everything I could to protest my case, but since I had to keep this job, I had no choice but to comply again. So, reluctantly, I started the car and headed off. Then, as I drove down the street, I looked out the window, wary of the dark clouds forming in the sky. Damn it, I knew I should have stayed home. Eventually, I made it to Wendy's. However, now the rain was pouring more violently outside, and if this continued, I couldn't go home at all. Then, moments later, loud thunderstorms appeared like jump scares that would cause the lights to flicker every now and then. I was supposed to be working with one other colleague, however, he never came. I assumed that he trusted his instincts and decided to call in despite what the boss told him. I slammed my fists on the table, regretting my decision again. Then, suddenly, the doorbell jingled. And, at first, I thought it was just the wind. However, a customer surprisingly entered the restaurant. When I took a closer look at him, it was the same creepy customer who humiliated me the other day. I stared him down with a disdained look on my face as he was the primary reason I was given this punishment in the first place. As I was taking the man's order, I saw something from a distance in the sky. First, the clouds were foggy, and debris fell toward the ground outside. Then, as the winds became stronger, falling debris came closer. But when I looked harder, my eyes <gasps> widened upon realizing that it wasn't just any ordinary wind bringing all the debris closer to Wendy's. It was actually a tornado. The customer and I saw this monstrosity approaching us, causing us to panic. Crap, we gotta get the hell out of here! Give me my bacon before I call your boss and tell him to demote you to Taco Bell! I told the man that we had to hide in the basement where it would be safe, but he shook his head and continuously demanded that I serve him his order. As I kept prodding and urging the man to listen to me, he just stood his ground, justifying that it was hard enough for him to arrive at Wendy's. I was in utter disbelief that the man valued getting a Baconator than his own life. As I looked out the window, I could see that the tornado was approaching at a vigorous and rapid pace. That's when the man went ballistic, grabbing me by the collar as he relentlessly demanded the Baconator. So, forgetting about the basement, I pushed the man off me and ran toward the front door, immediately entering my car and locking it minutes before the man could grab me and pull me out. However, to my surprise, the strange man remained inside the restaurant, and I could see him entering the kitchen where I could only assume he was desperately trying to make himself a Baconator. 
Then, as I drove off a few feet from the Wendy's, my car was suddenly lifted from the ground. I was so scared to the point that I was hyperventilating. I was then sucked into a spiraling vortex of debris and began spinning around. I was legit in a freaking tornado. Ah! Someone help me! Get me out of here! Help! I then pushed the pedal as hard as I could, miraculously making it back down and getting away from further danger. Moments later, while glancing at the side mirrors, I saw how the tornado destroyed Wendy's. And once the tornado was gone, police investigators found one body amidst the rubble, leading me to believe it was none other than that stubborn customer. Of course, my colleagues and I lost our jobs after the incident, as there was nothing left of the Wendy's. But the most important thing was that I had a chance to live and tell the tale. This story was inspired by an incident that happened at a Daleville Wendy's after a tornado ripped through the city on October 25th of 2001. Below is a viral image of the aftermath of the Wendy's. It was alleged that over a dozen individuals wound up missing during the storm. One can only think the Baconator Bandit was one of them. Every time I think about Wendy's, I want to throw up. I ate it all the time for years, and now it literally makes me sick to my stomach. There's a Wendy's on my way to and from work. I still see it every day and I do my best not to notice it. I used to go there once a week and get a family-sized tub of chili whenever I didn't feel like cooking. I always went late at night because around the time I got off work, it was usually only one or two people working at the time. For a while, I never noticed a difference in the taste of the chili at this Wendy's as opposed to any others that I'd been to. Fast food places are generally quite consistent. However, one night, when I got home after stopping by Wendy's and had some, the taste was noticeably off. One of the pieces of ground beef even had a weird texture to it. I would always add extra seasoning to mask the flavor, but I could still tell that it wasn't normal. A week or so later, it was time to refill on chili again. I was the only person in the drive-thru that night, so right after getting my order, I stayed there for a minute to try some before driving off. As fate would have it, that batch of chili still had that same weirdness to it. When the drive through worker noticed I was still there, they asked me if I needed any help, and I mentioned the odd taste of the chili in as nice of a way as possible. The cashier asked me what I wanted to do about it, and since I couldn't really think of anything else, I requested to talk to the person who had prepared it. That made me feel like the biggest Karen in the world, but I tried to have a good attitude about it since there still wasn't anybody in the line behind me. They rolled their eyes a bit, but they obliged and went back to the kitchen. A minute later, this other guy showed up. Right away, I could tell that he wasn't the guy I normally saw in the kitchen, so I figured he was new. He was really strange looking, and not exactly in an ugly way, but if I had to describe him, he had a scruffy beard and had eyes far apart like a beetle. The man really made me feel uncomfortable with the way he was staring gauntly at me. So, what was your question, sir? Hi, I was just wondering if you, or, or maybe the higher-ups, are doing anything different with the chili recipe recently. What's wrong with it? It just... It just doesn't taste right. I eat this stuff all the time and started noticing a change. If the recipe changed, I wouldn't know. It all comes pre-made. Alright, sorry about that. Have a good night, sir. After that interaction, I decided to just let it go. It wasn't like the chili tasted outright bad. It was just different. I contemplated on going to a different Wendy's but never actually did. The nearest Wendy's aside from that one was just too far out of the way and not convenient enough, especially as a routine thing. After a while, I got completely used to the new taste of chili, and I even stopped trying to spruce it up with extra ingredients. I really did love their chili, and I have for years before that. This went on for the next two years until I discovered something absolutely horrifying. One night, after picking up the chili and eating it after work, the taste went right back to the way it used to be. It tasted amazing in comparison to what I had become accustomed to. In fact, it was so incredible that I went back to Wendy's the very next night without intending to buy any.
anything. I got a 4 for 4 just so I could justify talking to them. When I got up to the window, I asked the cashier what they were doing different with the chili this time. The Wendy's worker on duty gave me this really strange look. Like they felt sorry for me for some reason. They said nothing different was being done with the chili. So I asked again if they had employed a different person for the night shift. That's when they said yes, and that they had a new person in the kitchen. I was curious as to what had happened to the other guy, but the employee refused to tell me. They said that if I didn't know already, that they weren't allowed to divulge the information while at work due to company policy. That put a weird feeling in my gut, but nothing like how I felt when I went home and found out for myself. One of the most recent headlines in the local news regarding Wendy said that an employee had been caught defecating in the chili for two whole years. <laughs> The picture of the culprit was the same man I had the conversation with all that time ago. All this time, knowing that I had been ingesting tainted chili made me convulse and sick to my stomach. <coughs> I went to the bathroom and threw up everything I had in my stomach. But then every time I thought about eating that guy's crap, I would throw up even more. I ended up dry heaving at the toilet for the rest of the night and felt so utterly poisoned that I had to call out for work the next day. Of course, even though everything is back to normal now, I can't eat that chili ever again. I can't even go within a hundred feet of a Wendy's anymore. All I can think about when I smell their food is how much of that guy's crap I must have unknowingly eaten over the course of two years. It's absolutely sickening. This story was inspired by a true story regarding a Wendy's employee at the Mobile, Alabama location. It was reported that a man named Brian is now under arrest after admitting to defecating in several hundred batches of chili since 2013. The catastrophe took place for over two years shocking the local restaurant goers and of course the internet. I've been avoiding this day for so many years. I've dreaded it, but I've also wanted it to happen more than anything. God, it's been so long. Two decades almost. It's my daughter. I haven't been a mother to her for her entire life. Social services took her away from me when she was just a baby. I wanted to kill them when they did it. That's because of who I was back then. But I understand now. A child should never have to be raised around addictions like mine. I would have hated to see her become just like me. As it is, I know for a fact she's a better person than I am. Because over the years, she's tried reaching out to me multiple times while I've been running away. I don't know how she found me, but I guess she's very smart. I don't know a single thing about her except for the fact that she looks like me. I had all the chances to reconnect, but I never took them. I always dodged her calls and left her messages unopened. I just never felt ready. I was too preoccupied with the bottle or something even worse. But even then, I was never allowed to forget about her. Somehow, she became something of a celebrity. I bet it's a wonderful story. I see her face plastered everywhere. On TV, on billboards, even on trash littered in the gutters. It's like she made herself a star just so I couldn't ignore her. So I'd have nowhere to run. Her name is Wendy. I can't imagine how much she was bullied in school over looking so similar to the Wendy's girl. But I'm proud of her for being strong and making something out of it, instead of running and hiding from the truth like I always do. Something had to change. I can feel my body not doing well these days. I don't think I have much life left in me. I'm running out of time. No matter how much shame I feel, I have to go see her. I have to. It wasn't hard to find her. She sent me a lot of texts and emails trying to reach out to me. She moves around a lot but she's always told me where she works. All I had to do was scroll up and find the latest address sent to me. It felt pretty awkward to show up to her work without warning, but she's always invited me to do it, and I think speaking to her in person is the right thing to do. I tried to get as sober as possible, then head out to go see her. She works at one of the Wendy's in the same town I live in, just on the other side. There's really no good side of town around here though, so I wasn't too surprised to see that the restaurant was pretty run down on the outside. However, what I saw inside, that shocked me. It looked downright haunted. I think the lights were on, but it was still darker than it should have been. All except for one bright spotlight on the counter, shining right on top of my Wendy at the register. It's hard to describe the shock I felt when I saw her. In all the pictures I'd seen, she was beautiful, glowing, full of life. But in person, she was much different. Her expression was gone and empty, like her soul had been drained. I hate to say it, but she looked... 
demonic. However, I chalked that up to her father's genetics and put my apprehensions aside. It was too late to walk away. I was terrified walking up there though. I could barely speak. Hi, welcome to Wendy's. How may I take your order? I almost cried right then and there. This was the first time I'd ever heard my daughter's voice. What was I even supposed to say? Hi, I'm your... your... I'm sorry, could I just get a Baconator? Sure, the meal or just the sandwich? Um, just that. Will that be all? Actually, do you... do you know if you have a... mom? What do you mean, exactly? I... I'm so sorry. I'm your mom. Mom? Is that you? Mommy? I've been waiting for you for so long. <gasps> Are you okay? Mommy? This wasn't going the way I thought it would. I knew she might get upset, maybe even go into shock, but not this. I had no idea what was going on with her, but it was scaring me way more than before. Not knowing what else to do, I fell back on my instincts and headed for the door. I tried to go through, but it was locked. When I looked back, Wendy wasn't Wendy anymore. She was some kind of monster. She climbed over the counter with these, these spindly legs and made her way toward me. Mommy! I wanted to run, but it was like my feet were glued to the ground. I was petrified. When she got me, she grabbed my face and started screaming at me. Mommy! I accepted my fate as she lifted me into the air. She then unhinged her jaw and placed me inside. I couldn't even bring myself to fight back against whatever it was. Whether it was truly my daughter or one of Hell's ghouls devouring me. The whole time I just kept thinking, this is what I deserve. I deserve this. This is what I deserve for being a terrible mother. It was so good to finally meet you, Mom. I'm so glad we could finally reconnect after all these years. But the great thing is, from now on, you'll always be with me. Forever and ever. <laughs> There's a Wendy's conspiracy that's been floating around the internet regarding the infamous Wendy's logo with the word mom spelled out on the collar. This was our take on the conspiracy itself. Maybe you now understand the significance of the word mom on the collar now.